now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the part where I sing. Hey, everybody. It's Alex, and it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is a man who uh, rejects anything that's modern, anything that's needed today, and in a fit of that, you got high-speed internet finally, right? I had a trial period, yeah. You had a trial period. What did you do after the trial period? I went back to uh, the old dial-up, net zero. What is with you? I'm what? just getting email now. I got, uh, it was kind of interesting for a while while I had the high speed, but... Uh, what do you mean? It was interesting. It was easy. It was easier. <laughs> I don't, uh, I found I was spending too much time on the computer. I didn't want to do oh, that. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. You actually find that, found out what your computer was really made for. Yeah, I remember when it was 3 in the morning, I was watching uh, YouTube, I was watching some orangutan drive a golf cart. And I, what the fuck am I doing? Jesus. <laughs> the orangutan driving yeah. a golf cart. I'm thinking, cart. Of, uh, first I'm watching, God, he's a really good driver. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, why you gave it up, I have no idea. You know, it's just easy. If forget about anything else. Forget about Zoom and forget about even what we're doing here. It's just faster to do everything. You know, if you want to write an email to somebody, it's faster. You My want, email's quick, fairly quick on dial-up, so that's not a problem. Well, but it's it, it what it is is a you're you know, I had to get used to it when I, when I first got internet, okay? that the computer is, you know, the Internet is always on. It's not like you dial it up, you know. It's always there. <laughs> so that anything you want is always there. And, and you know, it, I just, I, when you got it, I was so happy because I figured, mm, we'll do Zoom and you'll get to, you know, uh, people will get to see you, see those funny expressions you make. And... Yeah. Uh, before I could re get around to doing you on Zoom, you given I didn't know it was a trial period for you. Yeah. Yeah. So they gave you a month, right? No, I think it was like three. I had it for a while. So. Three months? Yeah. Really? Oh. Well, you should have. I don't know you should have kept it. I mean, you know, if, if you're if you found you were using it too much, that's not the fault of uh, internet. It's the fault of Larry Bubbles Brown. That's true, yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh, and, and, uh, you it's know. It's unbelievable to me the amount of videos that people put on there. <laughs> well, it, listen, YouTube to me, if, if you could take, if you had to take away everything that I had access to, and I could only have one thing, I would take YouTube. Really? Wow. Yes, because there was so much on there. I mean, people have dumped so much. I mean, there's a lot of crap there too. You know, um, did you? You didn't. You didn't uh, happen to bump into the 15-year-old uh, Ukrainian refugee who plays, no, what's that? Who plays busks uh, in the street playing violin? <laughs> yeah, her parents moved here many years ago, and uh, uh, at. 10 she started doing these videos where she was out in the street busking and playing the violin uh, bu busking is when a musician people goes out into the streets and plays music and puts the hat down right you know uh -huh. where you're supposed to drop money into uh, but she started doing this in the streets and they started videotaping them and for the last five years they've had videos of this girl playing the violin and she's very She's very, very good. You know, I know the violin. My father was a violinist. I learned good violin from bad violin. Well, how I learned it is I found out 
anything I played was bad violin. <laughs> anything anybody else played was better violin. But anyway, she was very good. She's amazing. And as the years have gone on, she's now playing classical music and so on and doing concerts with symphony orchestras. And they videotape them all. So if for, if you, for every thousand people that you get watching a video, you get about four thousand dollars. Okay, yeah. for every I mean, million. I heard there's people on there that make a fortune. This girl is worth about five million dollars right now. Jesus, and she's only fifteen. You know, and uh, it's uh, uh, that's what happens with uh, some of these people on YouTube. They become stars, and I've seen I've seen some incredible numbers for people. I mean, she does a, like at least a million per video, uh, but uh, I've seen people who easily make 15, 25, uh, 15 to 25 million. So if you think about that, you know, it's 25 times uh, 4,000, these people are making real bucks. Wow. Not me, I just got a check for $200, but you know, <laughs> I mean. You know, then that was for maybe a year, right? So. Well, looking at it now, YouTube is kind of what uh, you were involved. Play TV was would have become that, I think. I don't know. Play TV wasn't that. We did it. We did actual shows. You, you remember you were on some of them. Yeah. Uh, we actually did shows. Uh, we went out and we sh did video. This was before anybody was doing video. I think this is before YouTube. Oh, and, yeah, this is 99. And I just did my shows every uh, every day. And um, um, five days a week. And we would actually do an hour, what was it, hour, two hours, two hour video show? Yeah. Uh, and um, it was, uh, it went out live and everything else. But the thing is, in that day and age, there were so few people there to watch it. You know, there was too few people who were there to, who had the uh, had, had had anything but dial up. If you had dial up, you couldn't get the show because it was just there was too much bandwidth going on there. But it was a beginning, you know. But we weren't YouTube. We didn't say anybody, you know, can put a video on. Uh, oh, okay. On but Play uh, TV. Yeah. But Play TV was going to have like a zillion channels, right? Of shows. Well, and... I don't know. We never planned it for that. We were happy. We just had the one channel. You know, we actually had two, two uh, uh, channels. One very low rate, so that people maybe would dial up could get it, and then then a, a 300 BPS we call it, which was a much higher rate, so that you if if you had that, if you had like uh, internet service, uh, you could watch this thing in pretty good fidelity. So. Well, how fast was the internet service back then? Uh, well, I mean, they had, they had. Uh, I think when was the first time I ever got non-dial up? I, I, I weren't, to, weren't those called DSL? Well, I went to DSL, one? and then finally, I think I did. I ever have um, full internet at that point when I was in San Francisco? I think so. Uh, I just remember you had so many wires on your desk. From, if, it was just unbelievable. Well, you should be here now. You'll see the same thing. <laughs> There's one thing that most people should know. If you ever decide you want to do video or audio or anything like that, you're going to plug one thing into another thing, and then you're going to plug that thing into another thing, and that thing goes into the electricity. And a ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. By the time you're through, you have a rat's nest of wires. And you, one day you say, well, I'm going to clean up this rat's nest of wires, and you unplug everything, which I've been thinking about doing, and then you plug them all back in, and guess what you've got? A rat's nest of wires. <laughs> Unless you go completely wireless on everything, you're pretty much going to be, you know, if you're going to do any amount of video and, and shows like I do and so on, um, so there's a rat's nest under there, and I'm even afraid to uh, uh, to, to try and clean it up, you know. So, uh, but uh, so you, you do remember the rat's nest? There was no question. Oh, about it was it. unbelievable! Yeah. Yeah, and then we had this big box which let us switch the show called uh, Trinity, 
and uh, it, we use that on the for the show to get it out and to switch it and so on. It was called television studio in a box, but today I could do that whole thing with one program that I download from the internet called OBS, and I could switch a whole show and do exactly the same stuff I could do with that whole big box, you know. So, well, where do you think Play TV would have gone had the had the guy not died? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the nature, how how sound the company was. Okay, I assume it was okay. You Did know. they issue stock? No. No, they hadn't gotten to that point. But I don't know how long it would have taken. Um, uh, I, I don't know where, where they would have wound up. They might have wound up again in bankruptcy, who knows, or they might have wound up doing very well. The product they had was a product that was pretty amazing, you know. And... Um, uh, so, I mean, uh, it, it, who knows what would have happened to Play TV. What happened to Play TV is I had this friend, and uh, he uh, he was my, he was kind of my, how can I call it, my benefactor. Because when I was no longer uh, doing radio in San Francisco, he said, come work for me, and let's start this network. Okay, and they, I was the head of the network. All right. And I did a show out of San Francisco, and they had a guy that did a show out of Canada, up in Revelstoke. Uh, and we had another person that did one out from the East Bay. And we had people doing shows from everywhere. We had about five, four or five different shows. And uh, that was a pretty good experiment, you know. But then Paul dropped dead. Paul was, what, early 40s? Wow. Just, Just a dropped, heart attack? Heart attack, died. And it was all over. That was it, you know. And uh, the dream of, of play pretty much died with it. I mean, they eventually sold the company. And, uh, you know, the technology they had invented was quickly being replaced by other technologies. As I said, what I do now, I do in a free program called OBS, and I can do all the switching I would have done uh, with uh, that, that big box you used to see there. Well, I went up with you and Larry Stahl one day to Rancho Cordova, which is outside Sacramento, and they had a big place there. That was that was uh, the home of uh, uh, basically uh, what was it? Uh, New Tech was the name of the no no it was New Tech was the original company. What was what was what was their company? I, it was called Play Incorporated. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, Play Incorporated, and uh, they had their headquarters in in Rancho Cordova, and it was a big building. You know. Uh, well, if that thing had gotten off the ground, uh, it probably would have been either gone on by itself or been bought up by Microsoft or somebody, and uh, you guys would all have been zillionaires. Yeah, but you know that that wasn't uh, to happen. You know, uh, Paul was my closest friend, literally my closest friend, and when he died, you know, he was the first person that was that close to me that died. You know, all of a sudden, I get a call. I see him the day before. I get a call. Oh, Paul's dead. You know, you go what? You know, so I think it was like a week after we all went up there. Really, was it that soon? Yeah, it was really right after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I do? I, did you ride up with me in my car or something? Was you had right? a new Acura, and I rode up with you and Larry Stoll, who yeah. was, I think, your producer at the. Remember this? This is yeah, spring, yeah, ninety nine. I think it was. It's funny, I, uh, as, as the time recedes, you know, yeah. I forget a lot of these things, <laughs> you know. I re forget, uh, you know, the people involved in it and so on and so forth. But I'll never, so I'll never forget Paul. Yeah, know? so that's a quarter of a century ago. I mean, Paul and I had some great times. We took a whole crew of people, literally a whole crew of people, up to Burning Man. Now people go, oh, Burning Man, everybody goes to Burning Man. No, then it was Burning Man with like 5,000 people, you know. And we'd go up to Burning Man, hang out. We'd go up with our, uh, we took a whole bunch of people and we uh, took a big, we took these big, uh, uh, what do you call these, uh, uh, vans or what, what do they call those things? With, 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 you can cook in them and sleep in them. Yeah, uh, RVs. RVs, yeah. Big, huge RVs. 
uh, and uh, we'd all park them in a circle there. And, and uh, uh, we'd go up with Brad Carvey, who's Dana Carvey's brother, and uh, the guy from, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, Mystery Science Theater 2000 or 3000 or oh, yeah. whatever. Um, uh, and Joel, Joel, Joel uh, Hodgson. Hodgson was with us on it. Um, we had a good time at those things. But we were up. We were up for what? They moved to the the desert up there, from San Francisco because San Francisco kicked them out because uh-huh. they were getting too big. So they went up to the desert, and this we went up, up there the second year they were in the desert. That's how far back in the history of uh, of uh, that little episode um, took place. And it was it was it was wonderful. It was just wonderful. It was magical. And we kept saying we'd never go back until somebody got killed. And the year that we went up, the last year we went up, three people got killed. <laughs> you know, one of them was sleeping in his uh, tent, which he parked outside of the normal area. And people like to go through the desert late at night and just drive like crazy because it was, it was like a 40-mile stretch of desert. And you could literally start at one end and speed all you wanted to to the very end. I mean, in fact, it was used as a place to test uh, fast automobiles and so on. And and never hit a rock or anything, all right? We love to go out there in the middle of the night, start going like 100 miles an hour, and then turn the lights off on the car. Wow. That was (laughs) scary. But you knew you weren't going to hit anything. Unless somebody had a tent out there and you ran over him, and that's exactly what happened to this guy. Jesus. Yeah. So uh, that was the last year we went up there because somebody died. That was our rule. Uh, and uh, then it just came, got bigger and bigger and bigger. I think thirty thousand. too big. Thirty thousand yeah. people show up there now. Yeah. Um, and to me, that wouldn't be fun. What was fun was that. You know, you were in the middle of a desert. It's pretty foreboding. There's nothing out there. It's just flat land. It's like you're on the moon. In fact, uh, I wouldn't um, doubt that the moon's surface is a lot like the surface of the Black Rock Desert. And, you know, you you all got together as a group of 5,000 people. Then the last year we were there was about 10,000. And you're surviving because you're all helping each other survive. You know, people bring food, people bring water, people do that. And finally, in the end, uh, you've got a community that is surviving because they're there in numbers. And and that was a great experience. That was a wonderful experience. Um, But I don't know that I'd want to go back to it now, you know. Yeah, you used, to, you used to take uh, time off from the radio to go up there. Yeah, yeah, I would take off a day or something like that on either end of it. Uh, but uh, so, uh, you know, I remember um, Burning Man when it was, uh, they had a thing. I'll, I'll show you how, how what life was like in that desert. They had an area that they set off on the side, up, away from the main place where people were. And you would go there, and if you if you looked at it, they had like stuffed dolls all along the road there, and it was what they called their drive-by shooting range. <laughs> and you could drive by and just shoot guns out of the car, and and, and kill these stuffed animals. Well, there's nobody there. It's fun. Yeah, they stopped that I think a few years after we left because they said. Uh, in fact, I think they stopped it while we were still going there because they said too many people are coming here and it's going to get too dangerous. We have the drive-by shooting range. So, <laughs> well, I forgot that it used to be in San Francisco. Was it out at the beach? It was out at the. It was out at the beach. Not 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 the beach beach, but the one in the bay. You know. Um, I'm trying to remember what they call the area, but you know that part of the bay where you can kind of see the Golden Gate Bridge and everything like that. It was done along in there, 
Okay. Uh, and they would, uh, you know, they'd burn a, a, a big man. And uh, the city got tired of it. And they said, this is uh, getting too dangerous and too loud and too whatever. And uh, so they moved up to Nevada to the Black Rock Desert. And um, as I say, we were there the second year they were up there. And uh, we loved it. We just, we looked forward to it, you know. But, uh, and also because a lot of women walking around naked, that was, that was a. Yeah, I heard they had that. That was the plus, you know. Uh, They do now too, but you can't stare at them. Uh, (laughs) You know. But it was a wonderful experience. It was just, just wonderful. And uh, I love sharing that with with Paul. Yeah, I remember you really liked that. And how did how did, was he just a fan of yours? We met because I was interested in a product. He was working for a company called New Tech. I was interested in a product they were coming out with, which was a television studio on a card that you put inside an Amiga computer. And this thing was a phenomenal idea, and it was done. It was created by them and uh, put together by Brad Carvey, who's Dana Carvey's brother. And um, it was a it was a terrific uh, a product, and I was so interested in it. And then I, I, I met I, somehow I met up with Brad Carvey, I think it was, and I said to Brad, "You're working with these guys at New Tech, aren't you?" And he said, "Yeah." I said, "Boy, I really would love to see that." Uh, that um, uh, card working. Uh, it was called the Video Toaster. That's it, the toaster. Yeah. And I said, uh, and they said, oh, well, I, uh, the guys are in town next week. And so we, I got together with Tim Jennison and, and Paul and got to know them. And that's where it all started, you know. And then they gave me a, a Video Toaster and they gave me the computer to go with it. And I was doing a lot of stuff, editing with it and playing with it and doing stuff with it. So, you know, um, that was my uh, my life with them. God, those guys were ahead of their time, Jesus. Way ahead of their time. Way ahead of their time. And it was just the thing about, you know, like, gee, on TV stations, you know, they take a picture and they fly it off the screen. And they do this and they do that. Why can't we just do that with a card on a computer? And they found the Amiga, which was a very video-friendly computer. Because, well, I won't go into the technology of it, but the reason they could do it was because it, the end product of the Amiga was a broadcast signal, uh, not realizing it was actually a broadcast signal. Uh, and so they made this, so they had this dream to make this card, and, and everybody said it wouldn't work, couldn't happen, you couldn't do it. And they did it. Because they worked, they literally created this outside of the box, as they call it, you know, and created an amazing product. Um, and so I got to know them through that. And then Paul became very close with me, and we used to do things like, you know, take one, take a overnight, a overnight trip to Reno or Lake Tahoe, or we just drive up because he was in Sacramento. We just drive up, you know. Yeah. Did you ever make one of those midnight runs to to Lake Tahoe and then back? Not a no, but I know a lot of people that did. <laughs> I used to love doing that. Really? You know. <laughs> uh, you go up, you get in the car, because if you're with people, you can just talk and everything. You drive all the way up. takes about three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. You go there. You go into the casino. You stay there long enough to lose a lot of money. And then you get in the car and you go back home. You know, and it's really nice. It's a beautiful trip up there. So, yeah. You know. So that was that was my big relationship with Paul. So we used to take those little trips. Well, up there. Uh, sorry he left us so early. I am too. You know, who knows what would have happened? But yeah. he was the only beneficiary I ever had to my career who said, "Come up to, you know, come up here to play, work for me, and do anything you do everything you ever wanted to do." you know, with television. And uh, he he gave me free reign. The minute he left, I didn't have free reign anymore. You know, so that was pretty much the end of it there. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, well, that's uh, one one more person in my life who died. (laughs) 
you know. all the cool people, him, Shecky. Yeah, I mean, uh, my, I've often, often said I have my three best friends, and they're all dead now. I have no. If I drop dead, nobody's going to be at my funeral. You know. <laughs> I'll show up. But no, you won't. You'd have to get in an airplane and fly <laughs> out here, airplane, and you don't yeah. fly. <laughs> I fly, but it's. <laughs> but it's uh, right white knuckles. Well, these days with Boeing, it is. Yeah. 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 Of course, you'll get old enough, you won't have any knuckles left. So you know. <laughs> Hey, listen, we've run out of time. God, we man, have. You know, uh, do you believe it goes by this fast? Sales by. It sales by. Absolutely sales by. Hey, listen, it's great talking to you once again, you my too, friend. my friend. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And yeah. we'll see you again next week. Sounds great, Alex. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, all righty. There, uh, there was Bubbles. We love Bubbles, as I always like to say. We love Bubbles. Who doesn't love Bubbles? I wouldn't blow Bubbles, but I, <laughs> there's a bad joke. Anyway, uh, my eyes are tearing, and it's, you know, we're going to get some more snow. And uh, there we go. That's what old people do. They, they always have a tissue in their hand. And uh, they're always blowing their nose, and we because we always get uh, plugged up. So anyway, here we go with our program uh, for another another night. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring our Zoom panel in, and how I do that is by admitting them and uh, going here like this. And wait a minute, I admit all. Yeah, joining. And they're joining. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, we got Brian and we got uh, we got uh, Josh so far. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Okay. Well, we'll see you later. Bye. Okay. See you. Wh wh where are you, uh, Brian? Uh, I'm at a secret location. You're at a secret location. <laughs> can you turn your mic? Can you? Is there any way you can turn your mic down? I don't know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a little bit, you know, because I'd like to even it out uh, because Josh is a little on the Oh, yeah. Side. You know why? Because I'm on, yeah, because I'm on different mic. Yeah. But, yeah. Is that lower? No. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. He'll keep trying. So you're in a secret location. No, I'm just working, so I'm in low time. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Well, well, you, it, it, Is that better? Yeah, it's, it's better. It's better. It's okay. Just back off your your. Yeah, yeah. You, I, you, I hope I have my other other mic. So okay. Okay. You have another mic? You say? At home. At home, I have another mic. Well, we'll go home and get it. Okay. <laughs> I'll be back in three hours. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, hello, everybody. It's uh, it's Friday. I went to the doctor today for my annual. Well, actually, the way it's been going with him, it's about my once every three year physical. <laughs> and he did. He checked me out, and you know, he did his echocardiogram on my heart, and he said, except for the fact you got a little calcium in there and the aortas and the arteries and so on, you're fine. He says there's <laughs> nothing. Nothing to worry about, uh, you know. Since the last time I saw you, nothing has changed, so I'm I'm okay. So, uh, in that respect, I guess I should be happy. And then, uh, you know, the blood test will come back next week, and they'll say, "Oh, well, we found cancer in your blood." What I have is I have uh, I have stool in my blood, and it's uh, it's a terrible thing. It's very unusual. Anyway, so I went and saw him and. You know, it's my, uh, I guess I should see him every year. I just haven't because I've been to so many other doctors and doing stuff with other doctors that you don't have time to go back to your primary physician. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it uh, you know, it was a nice little visit and I was happy with it. And then I came home and I've been sleeping all day. I don't know why. I'm just tired. But, you know, that's it. Me complaining about my health again. 
So what else is new? Now, wait a minute. You're there on a Saturday, uh, Friday, and what are you going to be there? Work tomorrow? Yeah, because we have Monday off. So oh, I, I was see. here late, late, late tonight. I'm not going to drive back home. So. Oh, okay. So it's President's Day, yeah, on, uh, yeah. on Monday. Oh, cool. That's the one they gave us. They left us. They took away one president. You realize it used to be great when I was a kid. I loved it at school because you got Washington off and then you got Lincoln off a week later, about maybe a little more than a week later. And uh, that was terrific, you know. But then all of a sudden they said, well, we got to make way for Martin Luther King. And rather than really honor Martin Luther King by give us, giving us another day off, what did they do? Switcheroo. Yeah. Yeah. The old switcheroo. Yeah. So they, they we didn't get any more days off. But now they're thinking, you know, they, I, I think it was in uh, Alabama, I think it was, someplace like that, that a school started this, where the day after um, the Super Bowl, they oh. gave the, all the kids off. Well, why? The kids aren't up late drinking beer and partying. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, but there's a, th a move to make uh, the day after Super Bowl uh, a, uh, a, what do you call it, a, uh, you know, a, a, a national holiday. So <laughs> maybe we'll get another one. But, you know, they didn't want to give us any more because they didn't want to have businesses have to pay people for a day off. So. How you doing uh, there, uh, Josh? I'm doing uh, pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Nobody's calling tonight. This is the last night was pretty slow too. I, I think what, I think what I should do is I should say, you know, if you don't call by five minutes after eleven, I'm not taking any more calls. And let's see if they maybe start calling. You know, I mean, I know. Josh was there waiting. Brian was there waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so. Uh, got they, in early. Huh? I got in early. You got in early. Yeah. Well, uh, Phil, Phil, Phil's donating right now to the Trump fund, so we know he's busy tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Phil, if you're going to send him any money, that's like uh, uh, spit in the fucking ocean, you know? Especially <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, what's unusual about all of this is that in order to make an appeal... He has to post the money, okay, which total comes to almost $400 million, which, quite frankly, Mr. Billionaire doesn't seem to have. So now he's going to his, uh, his uh, fans, as it were. I call them fans. I don't think I can call them political followers. Um, and he's asking them for money to help him out. Now, if he were truly a billionaire, as he said, I mean, what they said was he was lying about his worth. And they were. He was lying about his worth. No doubt about it. Because if he can't come up, let's say if he, he's a multi-billionaire, like he claimed, shouldn't he be able to come up with that 400000 by just writing a check? $400 million rather, by writing a check? Nah, he can't do it. But they say this is going to bankrupt him because he has to come up with that money. Otherwise, he can't do the appeal. It's incredible. It's incredible. That's my understanding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I believe that's been the hold up with the appeal of the second uh, judgment to the E. Jean Carroll. Yeah, we well, he's got to come up with that, too. All of that. But... Um, that's my understanding that, you know, the first one was appealed, you know, because he posted that one, but it was, you know, it was $5 million and, you know, I'm sure that was easily able, you know, he could get that even if he borrowed it or whatever, you know, I'm sure he has enough assets that he could leverage $5 million, but a hundred million is different. And then another 350 million on top of that is way different. Yeah. So... Uh, I would assume that he can't appeal. And, you know, if he appealed anyway, these were all in New York State court, correct? So, I mean, it's, yeah. they're probably not going anywhere. 
even if he did appeal, they're going to go to the New York State Supreme Court, I assume, and I don't imagine that's going to be... And one of the things is he would normally... Maybe he might try to go to a bank and get the money or something, but he can't do that because he can't do business in New York State. So what you're probably saying is, well, he can go down to Florida and go to a bank there and borrow the money, but the problem is if that bank has a bank in New York State, he can't do business with that bank. Yeah, I'm not sure what limitations he would have on how who he could borrow money from. Well, no, if if they um, have a if they have a bank in New York, you know, I'm not sure. Then I'm... then it is considered that he's doing business in the state of New York. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure on that. Yeah, I heard I'm... a lot of they on MSNBC. This was like a godsend for them. Yeah. Right. It was the best thing since somebody <laughs> getting killed in 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 uh, uh, in Kansas. Yeah. yeah, I I heard that he's going to borrow it from the uh, Republican National Committee. No, <clears throat> I don't think they're that stupid. <clears throat> well, they're not going to give it to him, right? <clears throat> and do they have that much money? I don't know. It's a lot yeah. of money. I mean, when you think about the amount of money that they get to run a campaign, what do people? What 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 kind of money do these people have to run a campaign? Well, the last few presidential campaigns have spent a couple hundred million dollars each, I believe. Yes. The problem a is, is even of... if they, right, even if they did have four hundred million dollars on hand, which is possible, I mean that would wipe them out. Where are they going to get four hundred million dollars again to run a campaign? Because the last campaign was damn near a billion dollars between the and, the, and, and there's no guarantee he's going to be running a campaign by that time in fact oh, that's the true. latest thing in new york with the uh with the uh, uh porn star hush money trial mm -hmm. uh that one um is going to start he he went in to try and stop it but they said no it's going to start it's going to start i think on march may is it may 25th or something like that i can't remember the date it's now. march 25th but they march 25th, march 25th they yeah. say it's going to take six weeks well he's off the road he's not campaigning yeah during that period of time i thought it was more like in the end of may actually rather than well march, they, were, they kept trying to push it but it well, they tried to push it out out of the, the way night. yeah i mean it's been denied for the same reasons that they would deny it for anybody else. You know, I mean, it's he doesn't have a reason to deny it. Running for president isn't a reason to deny a criminal trial. I mean, because it's inconvenient for your work is not a reason. I mean, if I get drunk and crash my car and kill somebody and I'm charged with, you know, vehicular homicide, can I say, well, you know, this criminal trial is really inconvenient for my job. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. It's not really an argument, right? I mean, right. You know, and that's, I mean, for what they would do for me or for you, I mean, it's the same. That's what he's finding out is his money and his fame do go far, but only so far. How do you think, how do you think uh, people are going to, his people are going to take this? I mean, how are they going to react to it? They don't have the money to help him out. It's they a witch hunt. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's a witch hunt. You mean like his rank and follow, you know, yeah. people like yeah. live in my neighborhood people? Yeah, yeah you know? those people. <laughs> well, they'll probably send him money. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, I would, you know, my mother will probably go on the internet and send him a hundred dollars or something. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, one have... of the one of the things the judge said was that you know he claimed to be a billionaire and he really wasn't. He was using those false numbers in order to get money from banks. Well, yeah, I okay, that. so that yeah. was part of the fraud. So now these got people who are fans of his are going to send him money because he isn't a billionaire, even though he said he was a billionaire and yeah. probably still claims he's a billionaire. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Most people would believe that the, that judge was just was either planted there or paid to do that or blackmailed to do that or just absolutely well, no, the only truth here is that he he, he, he was put in that job to get even with me yeah. okay because i wound right. up having to pay an extra forty two hundred dollars right okay. and after he got that done before he could get out he was inconvenienced by this whole thing. yeah right exactly <laughs> the lesser of the two trials yeah, yeah. 
you should next time you see him, you should say, yeah, "How do you like that Alex Bennett boring ass rent trial now?" <laughs> you know. So, well, the funny I mean, part is he's going to have to go back to some more more boring ass rent trials yeah. now. Well, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of people that will send him money. Actually, I, mean, I happen to like Angoran in spite of the fact that he didn't treat me well. You know. Well, uh, in well, fact, I I blame his court secretary, his court assistant yeah. the, his lawyer you know uh, uh much well, like trump did i mean i mean i get it i mean does anybody really like courts and judges i mean if you're in a court and you're in front of a judge yeah. it's, it's, either way it's bad news well, no, right? he, he, I, I, found, I, I liked him i mean uh, he, i yeah. found him likable and uh, you know his assistant i didn't like didn't really like her all that much yeah. you know uh, the only two things that Trump and I, only one thing Trump and I agree on is her, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, but he's a good guy. I think he's a really good guy, and I think he relies on her too much. But this was a very smart decision, and I'll tell you why. Because he decided to uh, not go all the way as he had originally indicated in his summary judgment of saying he can never do business in the state of New York again. He's mm -hmm. just banning him for three years. He's banning each of the uh, sons for two years from doing business in the state of New York. And the reason I think he did that was that it just makes it less of an ability for this guy to go out and get uh, an, appeals, uh, an appeal uh, to go through. I think in the appeal, he'll probably be given uh, less money. But that's about it. But I think all three of them have to appeal separately. All three of them? Yeah, Trump and his two sons. Yeah, but his two sons, uh, uh, I think each of the sons well, was only a million dollars each or something like that. Yeah, but they have to appeal on their own. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, they'll appeal it, but before they can appeal it, he has to come up with about uh, 30, $355 million dollars. You know, maybe his buddy Putin will lend him the money. Uh, the the headline on on um, Drudge, who over the last many years has come to dislike Donald Trump, which was wise for him because it makes him more reputable. Um, uh, his big headline, big red letters, picture of Trump bankrupt. You think this will bankrupt him? I don't know. Good question. I mean, I, I would imagine that he's incredibly hard-pressed to come up with what, you know, adds up to damn near half a billion dollars between two cases. And I don't know that a bank is going to loan him that much No, no. money. I because mean, that, because, why would you loan someone that much money? Well, you're, you're giving them that, that money. They're not investing in anything. It, it's not Im know? invested. I mean, yeah. it's to pay... To just turn around and give it to somebody else, there's and, you know there's nothing there's no assets attached to secure the loan. Now he could put things up, I'm sure, but I mean, do the, does the things that he I mean if he sold Mar-a-Lago tomorrow, I don't know what it's worth. Mar-a-Lago is worth about I, I think they said 130, 140 million dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say I can't imagine it's worth a half. But do you know how much Trump Tower is worth? About it, but I thought Trump Tower was worth what well, I would have said. You know, me, I'm no big business guy. So I don't yeah. know these things. But what would you say uh, Trump Tower's worth? I don't know. See, those things get so complicated because it. I'm sure he's not the only tenant, and there's all these. There's probably all these leases and, and agreements. I mean, you know. No, but what is the actual building worth? He supposedly owns it. I, I you know, honestly, I don't 25 know. Twenty-five billion. Really. I don't know. Uh, you you have less of an idea. Less of an idea. You know how much, much, how much they said today it's worth? One hundred and fifty million. Yeah, I mean oh. that's probably about. I mean because they were adding up all the properties he had, and if he decided to sell them tomorrow in order to get the money to pay off what he owes, in order to make the appeal, right. he would have to sell Mar-a-Lago, Trump oh. Tower, and one of his golf courses. Of course yeah, so. I mean, but, but right, but the, yeah, I mean, a half a billion dollars will get you, you know, half of the NFL franchises in the league, and those are like a license to print money. I'm serious. 
So yeah. if a bank was going to loan someone $500 million to buy an NFL team, that's what they're going to loan the money for because that's a license to make money. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to loan anyone a half a billion dollars to, you know, pay other bills right. <laughs> that have no asset attached on the other end. I guess. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a banker, but, I mean, if I were a banker, I would assume that would be what I would be looking at is what are you going to do with the money? Oh, you're going to give it to someone that you, you know, yeah. apparently raped? Sure. I mean... Where do we wire it to? I mean, I don't think that's how the conversation goes, you know. So, I mean, Where do maybe, we wire it to? Yeah. Maybe that's why I'm not rich. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but I, he, he, the they say one. if he if he liquidates all, all his major assets, hmm. he still will barely have the money to pay this off. I can imagine that's true. Yeah. Because, so. I mean, some of, there's so much of the stuff that he has that I don't really know that it's and we don't really know that it's actually owned by him. Oh, I mean, no, most of the time, most of the time, most of the time, <clears throat> these, these properties that have Trump's name on them, he mm -hmm. sold the name Trump, right. licensed out mm -hmm. the name Trump. I mean, there's, but there's so many, you know. I but mean, that I mean, business, that In business. In flat, simple terms, I mean, yeah. I own my home, but I don't actually yet own my home. You but know. that business is in the mm -hmm. toilet right now because his name ain't work, worth crap. You know, well, so yeah. I mean, people are taking a lot of the name Trump off of their buildings. You know, uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, here on the on Riverside Drive, uh, there was a whole place called Trump City, and all the apartment houses there were Trump this and Trump that and Trump that and Trump this, and all those people sued to take the name off the building because those were condos and they it lowered the value of the price of the worth of those condos because nobody mm. wanted to buy anything in a place with Trump's name on it. That's how much his name is not worth anything anymore. He mm. made the argument in this case that the name Trump was really worth something so you had to add that worth to these <coughs> buildings yeah. and to these properties and the fact is that's not true any longer. He screwed mm. that completely when he ran for president. And then how, how many of these things does he own outright? Well, he owns Trump Tower. Outright? Yeah, he owns... No investors, he, no nothing? I think he owns the golf court in, of course in New Jersey. Uh, well, I think, what's that worth? That's probably yeah, not worth much. I'm trying to remember if the thing in... Uh, in um, I mean, I don't... Columbus I don't. Circle, the Trump International, I think it's called. I, mean, I wonder if he really owns the golf courses outright. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's when I was in the golf business, nobody owned a golf course outright. Yeah, it's so yeah. damn expensive to yeah. run that they all Trump. have them tied up in fifty different ways. So I mean, I don't know. There's Trump Hotel. <clears throat> there's a five diamond or five star one in I Las mean, Vegas on the Strip. The yeah, but he about, doesn't own it. He just well, licensed his name out, them. and I think they took it off the name off of it. If I'm not really? mistaken, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, seriously. Just the one golf course in New Jersey, the operating budget of that golf course has to be fifteen million dollars a year. Wow. The what? It's it's probably fifteen million dollars a year. For right? what? To just to operate that golf. Just to course. operate it. Yeah. That's just one of them. Because hmm. I know what kind of course I worked at. That was owned by a professional golfer. Someone people listening would have heard of who's on the Golf Channel. That's the guy mm -hmm. that I worked for. Mm -hmm. And the operating budget there was probably $1.5 million a year. I mean, so, I mean, and that was a nice high-end public course. Mm -hmm. But for a private, I mean. A private now, do those course, courses make m that much money? Uh, memberships, yes. Memberships, okay. I mean, where I live in Columbus, Ohio. At Muirfield Village Golf Club, Jack Nicholas's club, the membership fee there has to be. I mean, I never asked Mr. Cook, but I'd sort of heard. I mean, a hundred and fifty thousand. The dues have to be a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year per hundred, member. Hundred and fifty thousand a year. Ouch. And then, and the then when they want to do things, and then when they want to do things, mm -hmm. they make you pay extra money. Oh yeah. You know, like if their board gets together and says we're gonna redo the greens or whatever we need twenty five thousand dollars from all the members like that's a you agree to certain percentages they can just bill you and things i mean crazy mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, the money that people pay to say they belong to somewhere, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, you know, I mean, but, so that's, I mean, honestly, golf is not that profitable a business, which is why I've always laughed that he owns all these golf courses, because they do make money, but they also spend shit tons of money. I mean, only some of them make money, actually, and most of the ones that make money are the ones that you watch on t television. Well, he couldn't have wanted those. He couldn't have wanted those those golf courses because he would have a free place to play. I mean, that's an awfully expensive. I, I mean, they his. I mean, maybe his are somewhat profitable. I don't know, but I know that he's lost many courses over the years. That he's bought and sold many, and that is generally because, you know. It's no different than people on this panel have moved their bills around over the years, right? I've almost paid this stuff off, now I'm going to consolidate this, and instead of these two credit cards, I'm going to get this loan, and then I'm going to... It's no different. I well, mean, when everybody used, to say what, but everybody used to say what a great businessman he was, I said, <laughs> who loses money owning a casino? Well... You know? I don't I know mean, anything about that. I mean, so, have you yeah. ever heard of any business that's more able to print money yeah. than a casino. Just, just watch the movie Casino. Yeah. I mm. mean, it, it's just amazing. That he lost He lost money on that deal. Yeah. And mm. the, re, the, pe the people who actually made out, do you, know what, do you know what his casino was before he bought it? It was the Playboy Casino in, in, <clears throat> in, in uh, uh, where do you call it? In Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Um, yeah. yeah, and they had to go out of business because of all kinds of suits and things that were hitting the Playboy organization, and so consequently they got rid of. It. I think they had to get rid of it because of some legal difficulties that then gaming commissions wouldn't sanction. So <clears throat> he sold it for a fair price, but not what what it was truly worth because they had to unload it, uh, and he bought it from them. So that was the. That was the deal. Um, oh, there, there is a, there, there's Kevin. Yeah. Yes, uh, but anyway, so he, uh, you know, I mean, the man's been a sham all along. You know, I mean, I used to say when I was here at Sirius XM, I used to say, you know, Donald Trump, hey, you know, he he doesn't have a lot of money. You know, I said <laughs> I, I'll, I I I dare him to come down to this studio with, uh, oh, I'd say <clears throat> a billion dollars and pl 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 put it on the table here. Prove it to me. You know, show it to me. Show me the money. And uh, it just, he, he always was a phony, you know? Yeah. I mean, there are certainly people that are willing or able to, you know, be rich but not necessarily liquid cash. Yeah, you know, I mean, Winston Churchill lived his entire life as a an aristocrat, aristocrat, <laughs> Arist aristocrat, and at, times, <laughs> and at times was you know barely able to pay his bills. So how does that compute, right? I mean, but it does. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, because I don't have any experience with that. It's just because I'm poor, so I don't really know. Well, he stole money from the British people. That's how he did it. You know? Well, he didn't, but I, I mean, he just. I mean, his family had money, but it was always tied up in this and that. I mean, you know, and he would buy this place and this land. I mean, it was just, you know, it. it mm -hmm. I mean, it, there's a, if you start out well and you play a game and move money all the time, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if there's anyone who's like really rich, listen, call and fucking tell us how you do it, you know? <laughs> well, I know, you know, people who are rich know how to stay rich. They can lose all their money and all of a sudden... Before you know it, they're billionaires again, right? Because they know once you know how to make that money, once you have that ability, you know how to continually make it. I mean, uh, Shecky's... Generally what they do, from my observation, is they are able to convince other people to give them their money with the hope that their reputation makes them money back. You know, well, Shecky's, but... Shecky's brother is a perfect example. I mentioned this to Shecky on any number of occasions. His brother was a perfect example of what I'm saying. His brother was a millionaire, okay, multimillionaire. Uh, did very well in banking and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, the, I think the bottom fell out of the market or something happened, he lost everything he owned, everything. He wound up going back and living with Shecky in Queens. 
That's how <laughs> broke he was. Started working the pavement again. Started doing one thing or another. He's almost close to a billionaire again. Okay. How did he do it? He knew how to do it. He knew it. Yeah. He did it once. You can do it again. It's just schlubs like you and I that don't know how to start making that billion. You know? Yeah. There is, a, there is a trick to it. But apparently Trump never learned it, you know? Yeah. And he yeah, I mean, I don't really think that he's that liquid, you know, rich. But well, If he were liquid rich, he wouldn't be worrying right now, you know? Right. He it, would it, pay off the 350 to $450 million. And the total of what he owes out there is close to, close to uh, half a billion dollars. All right, so and and if if he uh, if if that didn't you watch in the next couple of weeks is he going to come up with that that money? I doubt it. No, he's not going to come up with it. He's he's got to come up with the money from the E. Jean Carroll case. Right. That was hard enough for him to find money for that, and I don't think he has yet. So I mean, you know, it's just not that easy. <laughs> but. Uh, um, I, I guess we're all kind of happy what happened to him. Yes, uh, Jeff. I'm always curious as to because I don't watch uh, uh, Fox TV or whatever from all of the Republican TV stuff. What are they saying right now? Did they get ripped off by Trump or do they? I this thing hit this afternoon. I don't know about three o'clock. So I decided about three thirty to go over to Fox. They weren't even reporting it. <laughs> I th they may have mentioned it. I don't know. I didn't tune in at the top of the hour. But they were on to some other story about some stuff in the Midwest or something. They, you know. And I went, how do you avoid this story, even if you're on the side of Trump? I mean, I guess it's no story for them because it's nothing they can blow up as a big story. <laughs> well, Meanwhile, M MSNBC yeah. was masturbating. Yes. You know. <laughs> I mean, this yeah, is probably be a migrant caravan this by this time tomorrow night. That's a national mm -hmm. emergency coming for us or something like that. Well, they'll, they'll, no, they'll be talking about this all weekend long. They're there. Yeah, also, yeah. I, I get these unsolicited. I didn't sign up for them. I have no idea why I get them anymore. But I get these unsolicited emails from Newsmax every day that I haven't been able to fucking get rid of. And I noticed that when I got mine today, it didn't mention anything about the guy who told the FBI the Bidens were crooks and, and uh, corrupted liars that, that apparently that was all made up and the FBI has charged him with making it all up as a crime, you know, because it's illegal to lie to the FBI about crime. So how does this affect Hunter Biden's case? Well, it, well, the things that he's been charged with, it probably doesn't affect that much because he was never charged with, you know, corruption and bribery okay. and all that. But this is the guy that, you know, went and said... This is why Biden's being impeached, because this guy went to the, the House of Representatives uh, impeachment committee or whatever it was called at the time and said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Joe Biden, when he was vice, very corrupt, you know, him and Hunter would get on the phone and they were taking money to, you know, influence policy and, and whatnot. And this, you know, the guy that went to their committee and testified and said all that has been a paid informant most of his life, apparently now, which, you know. How reliable is that? I mean, the FBI uses that to get onto things, but it's not always holds up that well in criminal trials. Mm -hmm. But apparently this time he lied pretty hard. So, yep. you know, you can't you can't go to the FBI with a sham story <laughs> and waste their time. It, you know, it, that's a that's a crime. You know, I mean, yeah. you can't call you can't call in a false nine one one call, right? I mean, and make something up. I mean, people get charged with that, you know? So this is not much different, but it's especially different when people were, you know, paying you. I mean, it's basically a fraud. So, you know, I didn't see that as a big story on their their big deal today, you know, uh, at all. I mean, it was a headline yesterday in some of the newspapers and stuff that I read, but I didn't see anything about it on, you know, the email. Well, MSNBC thing. wasn't flogging it that much either. Uh, although yeah. they, they got a bigger story yesterday, which was, right. you know, the Kansas City down. Chiefs uh, 
parade and the you know person getting killed there and some kids getting shot yeah mm -hmm. then they showed a picture of a couple of them have like a after party or something celebrating oh the, well that was that was bad optics that was bad yeah. optics it seems that uh, what's his name who's the who's the big play yeah. no no the other guy uh mahoney mahoney Mo mohan mohan mahomes mahomes Maho mahoney's is it rhymes with cojones i guess or something like that uh and and uh, he held a party and it was already scheduled to happen after it was going to happen after the parade so after the parade they still went to this bar and had the party and they even had you know facebook posts and stuff of the party right after these kids got shot and this other person this woman got killed uh, and they went on with their party but the thing is they probably won't be in a lot of trouble with the public there because the public loves them because mahoney's and his wife are very big contributors in town and very, very been very good to the city so they yeah. probably can skate on that but it still wasn't very good optics to have a massive yahoo party right after that happened you know um and then you had uh what taylor swift's boyfriend what's his name travis swift uh yeah. He was at the party too, but she wasn't. Oh no, I think she's back in uh, Japan. She's on tour, I think. Yeah, she's yeah. on tour. So she had to get back to her little tour um, after I don't know having a happy night at mm -hmm. wherever the local Ramada Inn. I think yeah. that's the best I hotel. Inn hotel. <laughs> yeah, wow, I Inn hotel. Who knows where they were staying? But anyway, hey, so last night, last night you wanted to ask Kevin about his beard. Yeah, I was going to bring that oh, up. Oh, yeah. Kevin? Kevin, can you hear me? Yeah. You, you're kind of breaking up a little I'm bit. Kind of fuzzy. What? Yeah, I'm running up the way right now. Yeah, no, we can hear you, but it's still, you know, it's still a phone phone thing. Anyway. Yeah, an, I'm uh, so, on the coast of Leaving Monterey going past uh, Fort Ord, California, right by the old Fort Ord. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll ask you about the beard uh, next time we talk because uh, it it would uh, involve. It'll still it... be there. I'll just listen. What? It'll still be there. I'll just listen. Oh, okay. All I'll right. just listen. Back just back. listen. Okay. Um, but anyway, where was I? Uh, so anyway, so that was bad optics. That was really bad optics of what happened with. Uh, yeah, but it was funny because that. That party at the picture, they kept zooming in on the, they had like some blue, like, you know, like the beer pong or the beer cups. Yeah. And they like kept zooming in on that saying, oh my God, they were maybe setting up for a beer pong or something. And they're like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. they, 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 got, they, they didn't get away with it, but nobody's really giving them a bad yeah. time about it. So whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and elsewhere in the news, as though there isn't enough news already, uh, you've got uh, Putin, and the latest uh, complaint against him is the death of Navalny, uh, who, if people are not familiar with who Navalny is, I'm trying to remember what his first name is right now. Uh, let me just get his name, first name. Uh, yeah, it's Alexei Navalny. Um, he was a big critic of Trump, of uh, Putin. And when he went to England on some kind of tour or whatever, uh, he got poisoned. You know, that's uh, Putin's normal form of uh, assassination. And he was almost died. I mean, he was very ill for like six months in the hospital. Mm -hmm. and hanging on by a thread and finally he survived and he got well and what did he do when he got well this is a brave guy this is a guy who loves his country he got on a plane and went back to russia mm. and started protesting putin he died I, in jail today didn't but he? The, will you let me finish the story of course that's why i brought him up in the first oh, okay. place <laughs> jeez um 
So he got he they then arrested him, sent him to prison. He was in a gulag in uh, uh, near the uh, 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 near Antarctica in what they sometimes refer to as Siberia. And he, as of yesterday, he had talked to some people by Zoom because it was he had to talk to a judge or whatever. And he seemed in very good spirits, very healthy. And today he's taking a walk, gets dizzy, drops to the floor and the ground, and he's dead. Mm-hmm. Suspicious, a tad, you know. Um, it, it, I mean, it's really sad. Uh, because and he's a, you know he was a guy we were all kind of rooting for, hoping he would get out of prison, that uh, you know, but uh, you know Putin kills those people that disagree with him, you know, and uh, uh, that's that's the problem, uh, and um, uh, you know what, uh, it's just it's terrible, but Putin, on the other hand, <laughs> oh God. And I don't know if he did this to hurt Biden or whatever, but came out with a statement, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that he is for Biden for president because he thinks Biden is a smarter man of the two and that he would have a much better relationship with the United States with Biden. So that at least we have the the Putin... Uh, uh, you know, saying that he's for, for Biden. That's very nice. And also, I think at some point, didn't he say recently that he, he, he thought Tucker Carlson was a moron and that that interview was too soft, that he was expecting a harder interview? So, you know, a couple of things to like Putin about today. So he gets cranky now and then and kills off somebody that disagrees with him. So what? You know. <laughs> Hello, Bree. How are you? Hi, Alex. Uh, good to see you. I'm okay. You're in a in a car. Yeah. Is that your car? Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm on my way. I've got to get. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, I can ask the the panel here, but I've got a uh, um, three lights in my kitchen. And uh, I can't tell if it's a, it's one of the light bulbs or if it's the re- the power relay. So I'm going to the uh, store today to ask them. And I may have to buy a power relay. I don't think I can get the light bulbs. They're special. So that's well, my Well, since we're not there to me. see your lousy light bulbs, you know, we, I, don't think uh, we yeah. can, I don't think we can answer the question. You probably... They, when I turn it on, they're dim. Like, they're, they turn on, but not fully. It's like, yeah. they don't... You know, it's like a fluorescent light that never kicks in yeah yeah well it, it, you know so but there's uh, three of them it's interesting we go from navalny to your light bulbs it's, uh, <laughs> you know you know that yeah, tree just, yeah. out your window is following you if your car is moving oh now it's not okay oh you're in the back seat of a car that's going somewhere you have a, a driver yes that's right now that is an uber is it no, it is not. It's not. Uh, what is it? Is, what, is it a particular company that, uh, that you have there? Yeah. Um, well, here in uh, Malaysia, there are many. Is it Grab? Uh, they have a Grab over in Vietnam. Grab? That's correct. Yes. The, the green. Yeah. They have the little helmets, and then they have the motor, the scooters, and they'll pick you up. You hop in the back and put on the helmet, and you're gone. Not in Malaysia. Yeah, they don't have the motorcycles. <laughs> Here, but I know what you're talking about. And it looks like like uh, that isn't exactly what Bree would be taking. Okay. <laughs> you don't like look like the motorcycle type guy to me. So. Yeah, I, I but do. Just, uh, but just think. I definitely I'm, take him. But I'm six foot four, two fifty ish, around there. And these little Vietnamese guys, old man with the scooter, and they're like you know <laughs> less than a hundred pounds. You know about five. Five three. So I'm like, do you want me to drive, and you can go in the back? Now, where where did you, where did you meet your uh, your uh, significant other? Is that a good way of putting it? Who me? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but whatever I found her, I should the have woman you're shacked up with. Okay. Um, I forget now. Where did you meet her? <laughs> 
Uh, through a friend, but the friend didn't warn me that she's the devil. So I... wait a minute. <laughs> no, I met her through a friend, uh, and I I knew her aunt. I knew her aunt. Mm-hmm. So. So, uh, all right. Next subject. So, what, what is this an unpleasant subject? Yeah, it's not that good right now, so it's okay. Oh boy. <laughs> well, what did you get her for? Va- oh, you didn't get her anything for Valentine's Day, <laughs> did you? We went through that yesterday. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh well. Uh, gee. Oh well. So what? Yeah. Well, things are always hell between Marjorie and I, but we are, we love each other. So you know, that that if you're married, fighting is part of it. Yeah. You know, but you know, mine were away for Valentine's Day. Huh? Mine were away for Valentine's Day, so I didn't have to buy anything or go anywhere. Oh, really? Where was she? Shanghai. Shanghai. Why in Shanghai? Uh, because it's Chinese New Year. Oh, mm. well, Happy New Year. Uh, but Sh- Happy Sh- New Year. Yeah, Marjorie went down to Shanghai when she was in uh, in uh, uh, Beijing and took the train mm. down to Shanghai and said it's a great city. You know, just a great city. Absolutely, it's it's so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah wonderful. But anyway, getting back to the news of the day, so Navalny is uh, is uh, uh, another reason for us to hate Putin, and it's a it's a terrible thing, just a terrible thing, you know. And, yeah, I saw that news on France twenty four. I was watching last night. They did a lot of stories about it. Well, it's a, you know, the guy is a hero because I mean, come on, you get poisoned by. Putin, you almost die after being six months in the hospital, clinging on to life. You survive. You get your health back, and what do you do? You go back to Russia. You got to hand it to him. Yeah, right. I mean, that's a brave guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a guy who is truly committed to his country. And long after Putin is gone, there are going to be some cities named after this guy. There are going to be a lot of things named after this guy. Because he's truly a hero, and in Russia, I'm sure he's a hero today. It's just people. Does he have any sons or daughters? You know, I don't think so. He has a wife. I know that. He has kids. He does have kids. They live in the United States. Oh, really? Okay. Are they young kids or are they older? They're in college. They're in college. And why are they here? Because it's safer to be here than anywhere else. Probably. He wanted them to live here so that. They could wake up in the morning and not worry about me put, being put to death. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. I've never heard, but if that would be my assumption. Well, how? Yeah. How much? How long does a guy like Putin figure he can get away with this crap? You know, Forever. the guy who tried to overthrow him a while back suddenly died in a plane crash. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and we all know who made the plane crash happen. It isn't just that people who come in contact with Putin suddenly are harbors of bad luck, you know. Yeah. I mean, I heard they did their best efforts to revive uh, Mr. Navalny, and I said, yeah, I bet they did. Yeah. They were in a massive rush to get out there and check him out. No, well, maybe they did, but the fact was that's, <laughs> that's damn good poison, you know. You know, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. Well, yeah. they say Putin is a master of poison. But you know, I mean, look, we'll have Ron Johnson and Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio all on television Sunday, making sure they stick up for their fucking comrades. So. Well, yeah. I don't. They think he's so great. They can go live with his fucking communist regime and see how long they like that. They love him, but they don't want to live there, so we'll see. It's it's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, maybe Tucker Carlson, he likes it so much, maybe he can live in Moscow for a while. See well, I, like yeah, I'm, I, I, Tucker would probably be on the air defending him. Def- probably defending, be. Oh, Putin, probably is. Putin was, wouldn't do this. I bet him. He's a nice guy. Yeah. 
Mm. I mean, the list of people who will sell their country out for money nowadays is long and distinguished. So, <laughs> it's amazing. Doesn't it's surprise amazing. me. So you know, I mean, what's going to happen to Trump's campaign now? I mean, it's, it's taken a financial blow. Yeah. You know. And, of course, Trump got out there today and said the same thing he always says. I can tell you, I, I, I could have told you last night that we knew this was coming through today, what, his, what he would say immediately afterwards. Yeah. Oh, they're out to get me. Witch hunt. Witch hunt. Uh, they're out to stop me from being president. You know, this is a way of the interference in the campaign. The only person who interfered in this campaign was Donald J. Trump. You know, um, I mean, look, it's gone through the process that it's supposed to go through. I mean, you know, I mean, in each case that he has, we'll do the same thing. And, you know, they'll have juries which are made up of citizens. And, you know, if those don't work out in his favor, then, he, you know, it's the same here. He's well, not going to he'll complain. We but I mean, yeah. we thought the Georgia case would bring him down. We thought that the. Uh, Mar-a-Lago case, the documents case, would bring him down. Uh, we thought that uh, oh, what, uh, the uh, the Washington case, you know, mm -hmm. would get take him down. But I think this maybe has taken him down more than anything. You know, we'll see. I mean, it'd be a little while before we probably know that, but um, yeah. I mean, the criminal <laughs> cases are. You know, all still pending. So, see how it goes when those get started. But I mean, I don't know how much money he has left really to pay lawyers for that kind of stuff. I mean, the legal fees are pretty high already, and I mean, he's basically been getting that money gifted to him by the RNC and other entities like that. So, you know, through his campaign and or, or whatever. But I don't know how long that stuff can last. We'll see. I mean, because he's probably got another year of that to go. And in the last year alone, he spent, I mean, there was something like $100 million in legal fees or something like that. He'd paid out or something. Not he had paid out, but, you know. He's taking funds you know, from, from, he's taking funds from the people who have donated to his campaign. From the campaign. And he's using that to pay his lawyers, if he pays them at all. Right. The other problem is it's hard for him to get lawyers now. I think he, uh, Jacoby and Myers is his new firm that he's hired. I was thinking uh, he was going to go to jail and hire one that was in jail. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who has access to the prison library. That's right. <laughs> but Jacoby and Myers, I think he'll, he'll probably wind up with Jacoby and Myers. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to come up with that joke because I couldn't remember the name of the law firm, but I finally mm -hmm. came up with it. So. Are they still in business? Mm -hmm. are, they st are they still in business? Jacoby and Myers, yeah, they still have ads on TV. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've heard of them, so the joke was good. I mean, he's going to get one of these law firms that just deals in mesothelioma. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> what did you think, uh, uh, Bree, when you heard the news about Trump today, or didn't you hear about it? Um, you know what? I, it's difficult for me to keep track of all of that. Um, are you talking about the 83 million one? No, this is the, ready for this? Hold on to your chair okay. uh, or your okay. car or whatever. $355 million. For who? For what? For what? For the fraud trial in New York City. The judgment came through today. Fraud about what? That he he lied about his uh, about his wealth in order to get loans from banks at better prices. And that's against the law. And uh, what they did is they prevented him from doing business in New York City for three years and $355 million uh, plus, plus, we didn't mention this, plus um, uh, interest. So uh -huh. it, comes to, it comes to about another $20 million in that. I don't think he'll be paying that. No, he can't come up with it. That's the problem. But he's if he if he wants to appeal it, okay, then he's he got he's well he's got to come up with the money. And they to say do what? he has to come up 
with the three hundred and fifty five million no, dollars. No, no, yes. No, maybe no, maybe no, ten percent no, or something. You're, I'm sure they've got well, loopholes. If, if he goes to a bail bondsman ten percent, you know, yeah. but that's the outside of that the, he can't he he can't do anything. And the thing is nobody's gonna nobody's gonna front him the money. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well well I I uh I don't think uh I don't think this will take them down. Um, oh, I think it's. I uh, think gosh darn it, I got here too late. What are they? Got here too late. There's too many people. Yeah. Well, don't let your look. Oh, too many people are there. What? Are, there's a line waiting yeah. to go into an appliance uh, into a hardware store. No, no, no. That, I'm going to do that after I eat lunch. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. But you know the fact is that uh, Trump uh, Trump's in a lot of trouble because his his reputation has been ruined with this trial. All those people who thought no. he was a bill, everybody who thought he was a billionaire. I don't, I don't think he's in trouble at all. Oh, you're you're so wrong, Bree. You know, you're really the thing is, is you couldn't every, be every time there's a case, you're like, this is the one, this has got it, this no, is the no, one, yeah, this is the no, it's this, this, this one. Is or, different. No, it's this one. This is different. This is hitting no, him financially. It's different for today. This is hitting him financially. Let's uh, let's talk in one week and see where you're at on that. What do you think, Josh? Do you agree with me that he's in a lot of trouble with this one? Well, I don't think it's very good for him. I mean, I I don't know that it will end anything politically for him, but I think that it's going to be serious trouble because I don't know that he can pay yeah. the the financial burden. You know, and and, you, and my understanding is in New York State you do have to post the full bond for an appeal. I mean, he posted the full bond for the first Eugene Carroll case, the five point two million or whatever. I mean, you yeah. have to post that in liquid cash i think otherwise you otherwise you can't appeal it as far as i understand it correct but yeah. i'm not an attorney and i don't live in new york so but the, i mean but that's the information that i've read basically says if he wants to appeal to the new york state court he can do so when he deposits 355 million dollars in liquid cash and a, a bank account set up by the state that will then hold it until the judgment is confirmed or reversed yeah if it's confirmed so, then see the also be... also the thing is Bree, this is different yeah. than a criminal case you know right. uh and this is a fraud case yeah uh and in new york state in new york state where they have very heavy rules about banking and how you right. get your money and so on and so forth you might yeah, be able to get away with this in texas but you can't get away with it in new york yeah, and there's not really a way that this leaves, in my understanding, you know, that this goes to the New York State Supreme Court, and you don't like that ruling. There's you, you can't go any further after that. I mean, you don't really take a state Supreme Court no. decision to the U.S. Supreme Court in a civil matter. Right. You know, if there was some sort of extraordinary constitutional yeah. standing or whatever, but this is a regular oh. bill civil trial. Oh, oh, oh. Well, this he is just stay in Florida. Well, he can stay in Florida, but this doesn't apply to him in Florida. The crime is in New York. Well, what if he goes to live in Florida? What's going to be like? Well, they can or still. They can, they, if he doesn't, if he doesn't come up with the money, they can repossess uh, Trump Tower. And still owns that? I thought he has that for some leasing or something. No, he owns. He still owns it. He, that's his biggest uh, amount of money. Hey, listen, I got to play the theme here. We're we're running out of time, uh, and uh, this has been an interesting day for news. I think there may have even been some more that we didn't uh, even cover. Week. You know, we're caught up. In we're caught up. Anyway, in it. Week. anyway I got to go here. <laughs> let me recency uh, Yeah, let me uh, say goodbye to uh, uh, Brian first of all, Brian. Have a nice time at that hotel. Uh, order out for dinner and maybe a hooker and have a good time. You know, a couple. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Josh, great hearing from you tonight, especially tonight, uh, because you have a good idea of a lot of these matters. Thank you to Jeff for being here. Thank you to Alan for being here. Thank you for Kevin for at least showing his uh, lovely beard uh, as he drives down the road going home, I assume. 
And thanks to Bree, he's out there in Malaysia. Wave goodbye, Bree. In fact, all of you wave goodbye, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll see you later, folks. There they go. There goes our citizen panel for tonight. Let me see here. There we go. Anyway, uh, uh, stay tuned now for uh, Amy uh, Amy Manuel. She comes up next on most of these same Gabnet stations. Uh, she'll have her callers calling uh, Skype at Gabnet Live. I'll be back again on Monday when we do the pop-up show. That'll be on uh, Facebook. And then we will be back again right here on YouTube and on our audio streaming uh, uh, on uh, Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.